Hello everyone, this is Mar Haddad here again. In lab number four, I'm going to speak about the DHCP relay. So why we need to have DHCP relay and why we need to configure it in our network. And uh, as you can see here, we have 10 points to do. But before I start doing those points, let me just take you to the lab scenario. We discuss there what we need to do in this lab and then we come back to the points to do them one by one. So this is our lab scenario. We have our computer here connected to Ethernet 2 of router 1. And uh, we have the DHCP server, you can see it, it's here, connected to Ethernet 3 of router 1. That means that the computer which sh should get the IP address of the DHCP server is on another network than the one where the DHCP server is. You can see here the PC is on the network of 172.16.1.0 and the DHCP server is on 192.168.1.0. That means if the computer wants to get an IP address from the DHCP server, he will send a broadcast to router 1. And that's what we call it the DHCP discover. So it is sent by broadcast. And as we know from the network basics, that the router stopped the broadcast. So the router will say for the broadcast, oh, you are a broadcast, I will stop you. Then in this way, if we stop the broadcast, the broadcast cannot continue the, uh, to go to the DHCP server in order to start the communication to be able to get the IP address from the DHCP server. So this is not possible. So what we need now to do, we have to create this router, which is router one, we make it a DHCP relay. The HCP relay, that means that he will relay the broadcast coming from the PC to be able to go to the DHCP server and vice versa. So because they are on two different networks and there is a router in between, then as I said, the broadcast will stop it. Then we create router one to become a DHCP relay and then there will be communication possible between the DHCP server and the DHCP client in our case, which is the computer. Another thing to mention here, that when you want to create on the DHCP server the pool, so pool of addresses, then it needs to take the IP local here. So it will give an IP from this range, which is 172.16.1.0/24, because the PC when he wants to make communication with the first router, he needs to communicate on this IP address because this router has on this interface 172.16.1.254. Okay, so this is exactly what is the DHCP relay. You may say, okay, why I need to have DHCP relay? Why should I put the router of the DHCP server somewhere outside my network in another network? Then, well, it, it's all about designs. For example, if a, a company has bought another company and they want that of the, the two companies use the same DHCP server, and then in this case, the DHCP um, server is uh, somewhere else on another network of that company, then there is a router in between that this router, you can make it as DHCP relay. So the communication between the DHCP client and the uh, DHCP server can happen. So this is the basic idea of what I'm going to do in this lab. It's very straight through. So you have DHCP client, you have DHCP relay in the middle, and you have the DHCP server. The DHCP relay, which is in the middle, is the one acting to let the broadcast of the DHCP traffic to pass from that relay to go to the DHCP server and vice versa. So now let's go and to the lab and let's apply that on the lab on the Microfix. Point number one, log to your connected router, name it router one and put an IP address on Ethernet 2 of 172.16.1.254. So let me put the picture here and uh, that's what we need to do. So we have to go to router one and we have to put on Ethernet 2 an IP address of 172.16.1.254. So this is what uh, we need to do in this point. So I will go to Winbox now. That is Winbox. And uh, let's see, I'm now connected to that router. You see there is no any configuration on it. I'll connect to the MAC address. And then I will go to the IP then address, I will put the IP address and please look at the picture so you can see what I'm doing. 172.16.1.254 and we put slash 24 and this is gonna happen on Ethernet 2. So this is the first thing I need to do. Point number one is done. Actually, we have still need to name it router one. So let me just give him a name. So I go to system identity and then we make router one here. Okay, that point is done. 
Port number two, put an IP address on Ethernet 3 of router one of 192.168.1.254. And that IP address, we need to put it on Ethernet 3 of router one to be able to communicate with the DHCP relay. So let's do that. I will go here to IP address. And uh, I will go here and I'll make an IP of 192.168.1.253 slash 24. And it's gonna be on Ethernet 3, which is connected to the DHCP relay. And if you want, you can put a comment here, connected to Ethernet 3 of router 2, which is the DHCP uh, server, actually. It's the DHCP server. And then I'll say, okay. And here I will say, okay. All right, so this is con connected to my computer. And this one is the IP address that it's connected to the DHCP server. I was saying DHCP relay, it should be DHCP server because now we are on the DHCP relay. Router one is the DHCP relay. Okay, port number two is done. Port number three, log into the second router and name it router two. So I'll take the cable from the first router. And that's the cable from my computer. And I'll connect it to the second router. So I have Winbox connectivity. And uh, I'll go to Winbox now again. And uh, from here, I will go to this router. And this router, we need to name it. We go here to System Identity. And we name it Router2, which is going to be the DHCP server. Port number three is done. Port number four, put on it an IP address of 192.168.1.254 slash 24 on the interface Ethernet 3. So what we are going to do now, we already have, if you see here in the graph, we have put an IP address on this interface for router one. Now we need to put from the same range an IP address on the interface of router two, so the communication can happen. They can see each other, okay, on layer three. So let's do that. I will go to the router, I will go to IP address, and from here I will go to 192.168.1.254. Four slash 24 and that's gonna happen on interface Ethernet 3 and here we can say comment connected to Ethernet 3 of router 1 and then I will say okay and now we need to check if they can see each other I will go to the terminal I will say ping 192.168.1.25 Three, that's the IP address of router one, and we can see they are able to see each other. The ping is giving me a reply. Okay, very good. Port number four is done. Now, port number five, we have to start now configuring the DHCP server and the DHCP relay. Configure a DHCP server on router two having a pool of 172.16.1.0. So we go back here to the picture, and uh, let me remove this. Okay. So what we have done now, we have just put IP addresses as it is on the picture. And now we need to configure the DHCP server here because that's the DHCP server. And uh, it's gonna be on Ethernet 3 because that's the one connected to the router one. But it needs to have the range of this range, 172.16.1. something, okay? Because when the users here want to get an IP address, they should get an IP address which is similar to this range, which is on Ethernet 2. And that's what they're asking us to do. Let's go to router two and start doing the configuration. I'll go to router two. And from here, I'll go to IP, the HTTP server. And we say the HTTP setup. I want to configure the HTTP server on Ethernet 3. And here, I want, here because on Ethernet 3, that is this range of IP address, I will say I want the uh, range of IP or the network to be 172.16.1.0, okay? Be careful to change that. And then I will say next. Now they say, okay, what is the gateway? What is the gateway for the users who get IP address from this range? Actually, if we look to the picture, the gateway, if we look to the picture here on router one, it is 172.16.1.254, okay? Because all the users who are here, they will go to that interface. In my case, there is only one laptop, but imagine you have here a switch and you have many other PCs, then they will all go to this gateway, which is 172.16.1.254. And you have to precise that 
on the convocation that you are doing here. So let's do that. 172.16.1.254 and then next. Now they are asking if the DHCP relay is 172.16.1.254. Actually, that's correct, but I just want to show you how you can set that manually. So uh, I will disable it for now, but you can leave it. But for now, I will I will disable it, okay? And then I will show you how you can change that later. All right. So let's say here we don't have any DHCP relay, and then we say next. This is the range it will get from 172.16.1.1 till 1.25. Three, that's fine. Next, DNS. If we want, we can put a dot a dot a dot eight. Next, and least time and finish. Okay, so we have configured the DHCP server on router two. Point number five is done. Point number six: go to the DHCP server setting and on a relay, put the local IP address on route of router one, which is one seven two dot sixteen dot one dot two five four. So we have to say to the DHCP server that there is a relay, okay? There is a relay that you have to communicate with. And this is, if we go to the uh, to here on DHCP, you double click, you can see there is this relay over here. And that's what I told you that I will show you how you can put it manually. You could leave it and to be uh, made on uh, automatically, but it's better that I, because I prefer always to be manual everything. So you can put it here, 172.16.1.254. And this relay here should be the IP address of your local uh, router, okay? So if you go here on the picture, we see, let me just clear here. We see that 172.16.1.254 is this, interface, this IP on this interface, 172.16.1.254. So, we are saying to the DHCP server that this is the IP address of the relay, the local, okay? Always remember it should be the local, the one connected to the LAN, all right? So here they said, put this IP address, 172.16.1.254, and we have put it here, 172.16.1.254. And then I will say, okay. Point number six is done. And uh, with this point, number six, we have already finished the work on the DHCP server side. Now we need to go to the DHCP relay, which is router one, and uh, we need to do some work on that router. Okay, Our, and point number seven, they say to log to router one, and then we have to go to IP DHCP and relay. Then I will take the cable, put it on router one again. So router one is the DHCP relay. I will go to Winbox. And from here, I will go to the MAC address. I'm still going to MAC address because I don't have an IP yet on my computer to be able to have layer three communication with the Winbox. So they said, go to IP and DHCP relay. Okay, point number seven is done. Point number eight, put interface Ethernet to DHCP server 192.168.1.254 and local address 172.16.1.254. So, when we are here on the DHCP relay, let me make it bigger. So you need to go to plus. On plus here, you have to mention what are the interface or what is the interface, the DHCP server, and uh, of course you have to put the local address. So the interface they said here, it needs to be Ethernet 2. Okay, remember again, we are now on the DHCP relay. And uh, Ethernet 2, if we go here to the picture, is this interface. Again, it's the local interface. Remember, it's always local. So we have to say that, okay, the relay is happening on interface Ethernet 2. The DHCP server is the IP of the DHCP server that is in communication with the DHCP relay. So if we go back to the picture, the DHCP relay can communicate with the DHCP server on this IP. 192.168.1.254 and we have ping it we've seen that he can see it okay so this is what you need to put here so here we say the scp server its ip which is 192.168.1.254 and the local address here again it's the address which is on ethernet 2 so you can see they mentioned here you have to put 172.16.1.254 which is this ip address here Again, 
254, the one which is on Ethernet pool. It's always the local IP address. So let's do that. We put here 172.16.1.254. And then I will say, okay. So this is what you need to do in order for the router uh, one, which is the DHCP relay to become a relay. Okay, so first you configure the DHCP server and you tell to the DHCP server who is your his relay. And then on the DHCP re relay, you make configuration that I just showed you now. And then in this way, there is communication between the DHCP server and the DHCP relay. Point number eight is done. Point number nine, check if your PC get an IP address from the DHCP server from the pool of 172.16.1.0. So before I do that, I just want to make a fresh reminder what we have just made. So we have created a DHCP server on router two, and we said the pool is going to be 172.16.1.0 slash 24. And we said that the relay is the IP of 172.16.1.254, the local one here. That's what we have done on router two. On router one, we have said that, okay, um, I'm gonna make the uh, relay on this router and it needs to communicate with this IP address and we put the relay IP and interface the local one over here, all right? And of course, we have seen that here there is ping reply. So ping is working. That means they can communicate to each other. Now I connect my computer here. And I want that my computer get an IP address from this pool. Okay, 172.16.1.0. So all I need to, to say, I have to say, I'll obtain IP address uh, automatically on my PC. Then what will happen? The broadcast will come to here. And then here the relay will allow the broadcast for the DHCP offer to go to router 2 and then here there will be the dora that i already explained to it to you about it how the communication of the dhcp will happen and then at the end he will get an ip address from this pool which is 172.16.1. something so let's do that i will go to my computer now so it's already now connected i will open the uh, command prompt here and i will say ip config and uh, we don't have IP address, so let's uh, do now IP config slash renew. And uh, we'll see if we will get an IP address. And indeed, you can see when I said IP config slash renew, he has received an IP from the range of 172.16.1.253. And that's from the pool. Look here, the pool that I already written here. So he has received this IP. And to be sure that he has received from this DHCP server, I can say IP config slash all then it should be IP config slash all. Then we look to the DNS because I put the DNS to be 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 and you can see it is there, okay? And you can see the DHCP server here, it's mentioned, it's 192.168.1.254. So that's the DHCP server that is giving IP address to this PC. And of course, this PC now, if you ping to the, to the interface of Ethernet 2 of router 1, which is 172.16.1, the 254 which is its gateway then you can see he has a reply so he is able now to see router one which is the dhcp relay port number nine is done so we have seen that it has received an ip from the pool and then at the end it's saying keep the same settings on your router for the upcoming lab so that's okay so this is what I wanted to show you in this lab. This is a very important lab. You cannot really find a lot of uh, information about the HCP relay on Microtech on the internet. So I uh, decided to do this lab just to show you how you can configure the HCP relay on uh, the Microtech. Of course, there is another way that they say that you can put the uh, port to be on a bridge. But in this case, when you make a bridge between the ports, then uh, the function of the relay is not anymore there because then it becomes like a switch, okay? So uh, I prefer this uh, way because this way you are making the, uh, the uh, real relay and uh, your router will let the broadcast pass. So it's still a router, but it is letting the broadcast uh, to pass using the uh, DHCP relay. So this is what I wanted to show you in this lab. I hope that this lab was informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.